Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies. I was recently sent a very nice care package from Air Hobbies, which is a local hobby independent store out here in Ireland. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on in the video. Uh, but the things that contained inside of this care package were um, selections of basing materials and a few other good bits and pieces that I think would be really cool to share with you guys in a couple of videos. The first pile of stuff that I'm gonna focus on is some of the Geek Gaming Scenics base ready. So is this product gonna mesh well with my kind of contrast, easy to paint, follow along with style of painting? I think yes, but uh, let's get into the video and uh, see what we think. Okay, so these are the two miniatures that I'm gonna use the Geek Gaming Scenics stuff on, one beautiful sister of Baal and one Necron. The reason I've chosen these two models is the selection of Geek Gaming Scenics that was sent to me very much complements these armies. So I got my hands on some of the kind of grim dark tomb world stuff, which is basically bits of dark crystallized sand um, with some green glowing rocks, which I think complements Necrons quite well. Um, and the other one I got my hands on was the Martian uh, basing scheme. Uh, Martian basing schemes are my favorite uh, basing schemes ever. Um, so I'm very keen to see whether I can substitute my Martian iron crust with some of this, it would make my life so much easier. And then of course I got some of the fast drying basin glue and some matte scenic sealant um, to uh, basically apply it and then make sure it stays there. One problem I had with the Geek Gaming Scenic stuff is the containers that they came in were these silly plastic bags. Now, my brain went into logic mode and tried to figure out why they would do this. And the thing that I can think of is that maybe that these are supposed to be kind of refilled to the tubs that you buy. So you would buy, like your first time you buy each basing you know, color or whatever, you would buy it in the tub. And then if you're running low on it, you would just order a bag to top it up, which is what my brain went to. Hopefully that's the, the case, otherwise it is just silly. Um, but I had these sweet tubs around, and I of course did not eat the sweets, they were very unhealthy, I just threw them in the bin, uh, I swear. Um, but these tubs make perfect for basing containers, which means I can apply or transfer the basing material to that. And obviously that means it's, it's very easy to see what the sand actually looks like. And as you can see, it looks way better in a tub than it does in a bag. Like if I didn't know what this product was already and saw these bags on a shelf in a store, I would not be interested in them. Whereas as soon as you pour them into a tub, all of a sudden they're this beautiful thing that I'm like, oh, I really want to see what this looks like on a miniature. Maybe that's just me. Uh, if anyone actually knows the actual answer, put it in the comments below, I'd like to know. I also cut out the names and stuck them to the tops of the lids just to make my life easier in the future. So we're going to start with the fast drying basing glue. It's basically PVA glue, but got some extra chemical stuff in there, so it dries a little bit faster. It's definitely a little bit tackier than other PVA glues I've used, which is kind of what you want because you don't want the sand going anywhere. I really like that it has quite a pointed nozzle to it, which means instead of having to apply, like basically pour it onto the palette and then go from a palette to the miniature, I get to just put a little blob straight onto the base from the bottle. I really like that touch. I don't think I've ever had a, a PVA glue or a basing glue tub that could do that. Uh, I've always had to, you know, like I said, pour it onto a palette and you end up wasting some or whatever. So after I've applied the glue, I run my thumb around the outside to get rid of the excess, make a nice, neat, sharp line around it. And then from here, we are going to dip it straight into the base ready. Now, I don't know whether it was look of the draw or not. I was hoping to get a green crystal in here to show it off, but all that came out was the black sand. As someone who hasn't looked up the like other videos on how to use this stuff, I'm going with like my gut instinct. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm supposed to do something else with them at the start. Um, but I, what I did was I put another little drop of glue um, on the base and stuck a a green glowy gem down to that, um, and then based around it again because I did want to have that effect. I suppose what you could do if you really wanted to is you got a tweezers, put a little dot of super glue, glue one of the green rocks down to the base, and then do the exact same process of grand base ready around the edge. Applying uh, the basing thing to the sisters. I used a little bit too much glue on the middle model, so I had to go back and scrape it off onto a palette, which is what I was trying to avoid earlier on. But same thing, just basically fed the basing material all around the base, trying my best not to hit her cape or her boots or any of those bits and pieces like that. And then after that, I go straight into the base ready. But like I said, I was hoping to get one of the rocks but when I pulled the model out, I did not have a rock. <laughs> I 
that is okay. I'm going to do what I said a second ago with the green gem. So I'm just going to go in with a little dab of, of the scenic glue and then stick a rock down myself because I really want to see what it looks like. So little tiny dot, obviously went a little bit too much there. Chose my stone, decided there was too much and scraped a little bit off. Plunk the stone down into the uh, location where I want it to be on the base. And then just dunk it back in the base ready to uh, basically sand up around the rock and make it look more natural into the environment. That's one of the benefits of that tacky glue. Like if I use normal PDA glue, I would not be able to put a stone on it that quickly and dunk it in. It would have just fallen off in the sand pit, but that did not happen with this one. And I was very ple uh, pleasantly surprised by it. So after that, we use the matte sealant. So it has like a squirt bottle top. So for the Necron, I just squirted it, but I did get quite a lot in his legs and stuff. And I was worried about what this might do to the model. And on the bottle, it does say you can either squirt it on or you can apply it with a brush. So for the sister bottle, um, I just poured some onto a palette and then used a brush to apply the sealant over the model. Now, having said that, it did dry and I can see absolutely no difference to the model of or the legs of the Necron. Like I said, it dried matte, didn't clog up anything. There's no you know, glue gunked up anywhere. Um, so maybe it's just my own paranoia. If I was working on an entire army and I wanted to do it quickly, maybe I would just give it a quick squirt and uh, you wouldn't mind it whatsoever. From here, we added some of the uh, matching tufts. So these are Geek Gaming Scenic's Mars tufts. Since I went for the Martian scheme, I decided to go whole hog on this base. So I just super glued a few little tufts. Now, obviously, there's adhesive already on the um, uh, grass tufts themselves. I like to hold them on permanently, so I had just a dot of super glue. Maybe I was supposed to put these on before I did the sealant. Maybe that's another thing that's supposed to design to help it stay on. Maybe that's another thing I got wrong. If it is, I do apologize. After that, I just applied the black rims as normal to basically tidy up and finish off the miniature basings. And from that, I was actually quite pleased with the results. Like I said, this will definitely save time for anyone who is trying to do an entire army um, in a short period of time. Or if basing isn't something for you, if you are someone that doesn't enjoy the act of basing, which funny enough, I do enjoy basing miniatures, but I've heard from the majority of people that they do not like doing it. So with a product like this, just simply adding a bit of glue, dipping it into a container and having a beautifully done base, I think it is a no brainer for most of the people out there. So do I give Geek Gaming Scenics a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I think it's gonna be a massive thumbs up from me. And like I said, I cannot wait to do some more with them in the future. Okay guys, and there we have it. Geek Gaming Scenics in full swing using their full range of product. So they're, uh, quick and effective drying glue, the actual basing material itself, and then the extra adhesive on top to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. A couple of grass tufts and we have our final result. I very much enjoyed using Geek Gaming Scenics uh, bits and pieces and I do hope to work with them again in the future and um, on a couple of other armies. Once again, thank you so much to Air Hobbies for sending out that care package. If you wanna check out Air Hobbies, I will leave links down below uh, to their store and their social medias and all those bits and pieces. They are a fantastic place to order from if you are here in Ireland as they do next day delivery countrywide, which is obviously a super important thing for this time of year, Christmas presents and the like. Or if you're like me and are just impatient with your hobby needs, you can order today and have it tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, comment and subscribe. And if you're interested in supporting me even further, there's links to things like my Patreon below. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.